Okay, so the very first thing you need to do uh, when uh, mounting your um, rails and your panels is you've got to locate your rafters. Um, for me, uh, it looks like this is going to be even easier than the house. The, ho the cabin had very small rafters and they weren't um, spaced equal distances, which would really make a big problem. Here we've got big, juicy, fat rafters. One there, one there, and these are going to be the two that I'm going to use. They run all the way up, they went all the way up, and then of course, that's where we're penetrating from the uh, from the roof. Okay, so down. our first step is we're going to need to mount the rails. Um, before we can do that, we needed to mark the penetration points in the roof, um, which uh, translate to the rafters. So I just made my um, measurements and I've calculated my rafter line. I've actually put in the first um, placeholder, but this is where the first penetration point will be. That will be our second penetration point. And then on this side, penetration point, second penetration point. You can see that screw. Hey, all right, Sun Sensational is back. Um, so I um, right now I'm installing the PV quick mounts. I, actually, it's the first time I've ever used this product, and it's pretty awesome. Really uh, provides an incredible watertight um, seal throughout, and they're really really easy to use. And I'm just gonna video one of these. But okay, this is what the prepared hanger bolt looks like. You've got your hex nut there. And then that little watertight washer I just brought up to the top there. And then again, what I'm going to do is use this impact gun and I'm going to drive it right into that hole into the rafter. Before we can start, once we mark our points, we're going to slide the flashing under here. Now, I'm hitting, can't get through, so I'm just going to use, it's obviously a roofing nail, so just use a bar, and then clear it out. Now I should have nothing that's blocking this, let's see, and I don't. It goes up. So you want to basically mount these just above the shingle drip line. You can see the drip line here. You don't want it overhanging the drip line. You want it just above the drip line. Next you just want to take some roofing um, sealant for flashing, roofing uh, flashing uh, for, com for in my case composite shingle. Um, you don't have to do this but they say it's a good idea. So what I'm going to do this is the underside of the flashing. I'm just going to do a little U right over it. And that's it. Okay. Flip this over. I've already pre marked where I have to go with this. And I can see it right there. Okay. Okay, we take uh, the hanger bolt, drop it in, and I'm using an impact driver. <laughs> Good timing, because my battery just ran out. Be right back. It's going to bring her right down. And there she goes. When I get to the bottom here, what I need to do is move this, and I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Hopefully you can see that. But I'm going to be moving this back and forth. You want this to, you don't want it like that, you want it like that. So the water will drip right off it. So I've driven that down to the point where I can no longer turn the block. So that's how you know you're completely fastened in. 
Again, the block's got to come down at an angle so water coming down will just penetrate off. But it's pretty easy. You just slip the flashing under, um, drive in the hanger bolt. That's pretty much it. There's a couple more pieces. You've got the seal. This is a waterproof seal. This is just going to drop right on in over top. And again, provide more waterproof seal. So not only is this so easy, of course I'm fumbling with the camera, but um, I probably took me three minutes, four, four minutes per uh, PV quick mount. Very quick. This one took forever because I'm trying to do it one-handed, but you get the picture. Um, once this is on, the rest is simple. Um, you've got your standard. This is the Iron Ridge. I like Iron Ridge. This works with all companies. You got your... Uh, standard iron ridge rail L feet here got your washer oops I need a lock washer where's my lock washer well anyway I'm gonna put a lock washer on top and then bolt it down and it'll look just like that one and then we just attach a rail to that all right so next we're just gonna attach these rails not much to this step He's got slots. So, it's going to take the bolt down. We're going to add this, this uh, nut is very hot. It's up in the sun. Okay. And attach that. I won't tighten it down yet. I'm just going to do the same down here. It's pretty cool so I can move them, adjust them. Okay, so here's where we're at. All our PV mounts are mounted into the rafters, as are these. I set in my first two rails. As I showed before, I bolt in simply. Anyway, right now I'm going to just set up junction box. So what we're going to do is run a junction box down and off the side. So I have to just figure out how to mount that. And then we'll move on to the conduit. Okay, so just mounting the junction box. What I decided, uh, what I came up with I guess, is just using um, the self-tapping screws. They seem to penetrate right into the rail pretty well um so I'll just uh, tighten that up got some clearance as well at the bottom and then we'll run the conduit straight down um, to a uh, disconnect box um, and then uh, what else I did was I jacked up my rails to the highest possible setting I did that for two reasons one I, I needed the clearance to be able to mount the uh, this uh, little J box and um, there's also you know another reason for doing it which is just keeping the higher you your panels um, are off the roof the more ventilation the more debris can pass under um, and uh, more ventilation it just keeps the panels a little bit cooler and um, obviously helps with production um, and then uh, so I'm pretty well done I just really have to finish the conduit and then I set in my first rails here, and then these are got my L feet attached to those um, PV quick mounts. So I just have to slap on those rails, and then uh, drop the panels and uh, you know plug and play. I'll go over it all though when I do it. Um, one other thing is my conduit. I'm sorry, my uh, grounding. So each panel will be grounded to uh, the rails via the little um, grounding clips. They call them Weeb or Wiley clips. And then forms a electrical bond. And then, so your panels are grounding your rails. And then you need to ground, um, run a number six from rail to rail 
all the way from the top when I set these rails. Rail to rail to rail to rail. And then that will go down to my conduit along with my two uh, MC4s straight down. Ultimately, the uh, copper ground is going to terminate at the front of the cabin um, at, at the um, main electrical panel, the grounding bar there, since that's already grounded to earth. It's a little tricky, and I'll go over some of this info on DC and AC grounding. There's three, there's actually like four different methods the code allows, and I, I think I got a pretty good handle on it, and I'll kind of go over it. I'm, I'm going with what works out to be the easiest method for me, which is pretty much what I said, but I'll have more on that later. All right, finish the conduit. You can see the run from up top. Uh, comes off the J box, comes straight down. Goes into this little disconnect box. And then from here, I still have to seal these holes, but from here, we will use the lock nut, attach that, and we're going to go right on in to this shed. That was ugly, but I got the uh, number six copper ground I had to cut. <laughs> Never glue your joints. I thought it would be okay, but this stuff is not uh, that pliable. Anyway, obviously, we got to run uh, the DC down, but got the hard one. We're going to call it a day. Sun out.